Hello and welcome back to Guided Hacking, this is ProHK and today in this video we're going to be taking a look at Binary Refinery. As we posted our video on CyberChef for malware analysis, Jesko Hattenheim replied with an example of his tool Binary Refinery and how it could tear up our coverage by just putting everything that we did from that CyberChef script into one line where he takes the original file and just calls one command of dobvba to get the output that we spent the video trying to get. Now, what is Binary Refinery? Well, Binary Refinery is a high octane triage analysis suite created by Yesco so that you can carry out all kinds of different manipulation of binary data within your command line interface. And this is what we'll be taking a look at within this video. So to install it, all you need to do is put in these four commands and you'll get prompted with this prompt. And here I'll show off some ways of how we can use binary refinery. First, when you start out using this tool, I would recommend getting used to the binref command, which allows you to search the suite of data manipulation models for what you're looking for. So if I want to deal with JavaScript, for instance, I can put in binref JavaScript and it's gonna print out all of the different modules that I can use to handle my data. But we want to take a look at our stager here for an infection chain. To start, I'm gonna use EF, which is short for a MIT file, which will read a file, and we'll point it to the hash and command batch file for our stager. Then after this, if we press enter, we can see an obfuscated batch file, but we want to deobfuscate it. And we can easily do that by piping this output into our next command. And the next command will be the bat file. And what bat does is it deobfuscates CMD files. So after pressing enter, we can already see a massive difference within our input data and output data. Comparing the two here, you can see that a lot of the code here has been deobfuscated and it's a lot easier to read, but we're not done yet. When looking through this code, we see a long string here of base64 encoded data. And what we would like to see is that decoded data. So to do that, we can put in another command by using the carve module, we can carve out any base64 data. And the output looks like so. Of course, the carve module is detecting some of the strings as base64, and only one of them is what we're really looking for. So on top of this, we can put a parameter of a minimum string length by putting tac n 10. And we can see that our output is just the base64 module. So to deobfuscate it, all we need to do is put it into the next module in the chain of B64. And we get our output, a very readable and slightly obfuscated bit of JavaScript. So if I wanted to actually get this output in a nicer way so I can start reading it, then we can just use binref to look up pretty print. And we can see there's a module to pretty print JavaScript. So we'll just pipe that whole command into ppj script and we can see that it has spit out an easy to read javascript snippet of code now reading through this it just looks like it's calling script and then http plus this long url here and it'll just call get object and this starts off our stager as this javascript will be called from the previous command that we looked at let's move on to a different example next up we have this emotet xlsx document and we can just emit it and we'll see that it's got all kinds of jumbled data but of course we want to find out what's in it and usually with xlsx documents they'll have xlm macros in them to execute their next stager so we can look up binref xlm and we find this command of xlm of which is a wrapper for the XLM macro deobfuscator to decode obfuscated Excel. And it will extract it from the file and then do the deobfuscation for us. So we can just call this after piping in our file of XLM deob. And we see all kinds of messed up code here. So sometimes you get some really weird output. And if you want to clean them up, you should always be looking at the optional arguments within the unit. And within this unit, we can see that it's got the parameter of sort formulas so that it sorts extracted formulas based on their cell address. And if we put tac s onto this, then we can easily understand our code here. And we can see all of the calls to URL download to file A and then registerv32 on the downloaded file. But what if we wanted to get out some of those URLs? Well, all we would need to do is simply 
rerun our command but use the xtp unit on top of it and that will just put in some common regexes to look for urls and then we can just copy and paste these into our blog or wherever we want to use them and let's go on to another example some of you may be wondering how do you learn malware analysis and how you can do the same as i do in these videos well if you're prepared to put in the hard work and time then I recommend that you go and check out the amazing content on the Guided Hacking website. There is an insane amount of technical content specifically regarding reverse engineering. So go check out Guided Hacking as your one-stop shop for all things reverse engineering. As a last demonstration of how to use binary refinery, I have found this coverage of a polyglot file which contains a malware config within it and the writers of this blog post have also included a configuration extractor for this malware which i'm going to re-implement into binary refinery as we look at the configuration extractor we can see that all it is doing is it's going to take the input file here and then it's going to unzip it it's going to read data and then it's going to base64 decode that part of the data and then XOR it. So we need to re-implement this within binary refinery. And to do that, it's pretty simple. So first we want to read out the MSI file and this is the sample that they use within the blog post. Then we're going to use extract zip and what this will do is it'll unzip all of the data within this MSI. And if we list, we can see all of the different parts of that zip file. But what we're most interested in is this data part at the end. So instead, we can just put in data and that will spit out a bunch of unintelligible data, except for this part here, which is our C2 config. And what we want to do after that is just because this is base64 data, we can carve out b64 to get anything that is like a base64 string. And this gives us all of these strings. Now, of course, we don't really care about all of these. And I'm gonna use a quick hack that I found to remove all of these strings here so that we only concentrate on the encoded C2 within this file. And to do that, what we're going to do is we're going to use the snip command. And what snip will do is it will cut out a specific part of the input. So if I go zero to 10, what it'll do is it will just carve out the first 10 characters or bytes of that file, just like you would do in something like Python. And it uses somewhat of the same syntax, such as start, stop, and if I add in another parameter here, this will be the step. And you can see that we skip out a few of those characters within there. But we don't want to actually just snip out all of this data what we want to do is just remove some of this. So we can do the inverse with tag R, which will remove the data. And that will allow us to take zero to 135 characters, which will remove all of these strings before what we're interested in. And we're left solely with that base64 encoded string. And then after that, all we have to do is base64 decode the string and we get the following. But after that, we have one last operation and that's to XOR all of the data. If we look in the code for the config extractor, we can see that it's being XORed with 56. So we can go back into our binary refinery and type in XOR 56 and we get the IP here. Well, I hope this was a good coverage of binary refinery. Thank you so much, Yesco, for helping me out with this. And until the next one, goodbye. If you enjoyed this video, a like would help a lot and subscribe to be notified of future uploads. If you haven't already, check out guidedhacking.com for a step-by-step -step introduction to game hacking and an ever-growing catalogue of content. Thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.